Hello, my name is Starla Henderson with Fronter House Quilts, and last week I showed you how to lay this out. I also told you that um, the next step is going to be to applique this down, just like you were appliquing all of these little pieces together. It's the same stitch. So once you've got all of this laid out and pinned in place or glued in place, whichever works for you, I'm going to show you once again this applique stitch. And, that, and all you do is you're going to go around. Now, I did change the color of my thread. I applique all of my reds and then all of my greens because you want your thread to blend with what you're appliquing. And if for some reason, every now and then, I'll do something where there's too many colors, then I blend my thread with my background. But you want it to match something as close as you possibly can because then it hides it. So that is one tip. Change your thread as you do this. And I'm going to take you now over to my table and show you that applique stitch again. It's the same one we've been using. And uh, your edges are all turned, so you're not having to do needle turn. This is really a simple way to do this. And you end up with a hand applique piece that you didn't have to needle, needle turn, which some people are really intimidated by that. It's one of my favorite things to do, but this is also becoming something I really enjoy too. So let's head over to the table and I'll show you the applique stitch again. All right, we're ready to applique this to the background. I'm just using a small sample. It's a little easier to get it on camera. And because the little the sample that I've been working on turned out really cute and I don't know what I want to put it on, but I'm going to do something with it. So here we go. We're going to first bury your knot. And you want to bury it in this seam allowance as best you can. If you can't get it in there because of the glue, then go behind it. Underneath, so but you want to get your knot buried, and it's going to come out in this rit, you know, along this edge. That's where you're aiming for for your to come out. Now I'm using a black thread and a bigger thread, which is why I didn't want to do this on my sample, so that you can see it. But this is the same applique stitch that I used when I needle turn. It's the same applique stitch we've been showing you. I'm just going to show you again. So you, after you've got everything placed, this is how you do it. And you're going to do this around every piece, around the edges, because the centers of yours, is, you should have already done this too, but here it is again. You're going to come, where you've come out, right here, you're going to take your needle and go right back underneath that stitch, and you're going to take another tiny stitch. And I mean mine probably only about an eighth of an inch apart. And you're going to pull it through. Now, if you do it right, even with this black thread, you can barely see it. The trouble is, it's hard to get it absolutely perfect every time. That's why you want your thread to blend. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. And I'm going to go up to the end, and then we're going to do the point. You have to remember, these are already turned. So you're just sewing this down. This is this is easy part. It's good sitting in front of the TV kind of thing, you know, watching the kids play play or I used to when my kids were younger and I was running them everywhere under the sun. If I was waiting for for them in the car or something, I would bring something like this and work on it in the car because you don't have much to do you're just stitching it down I liked English paper piecing in my car also because it was so portable okay we're almost to that edge to that end to the point now I really do like this technique because I can get my points so sharp without near as much fuss as when I'm doing it with needle turn. There's there's a place for every kind of applique though. So once you've got this down, look at some of my needle turn videos and and work on that. Okay, I'm gonna go back up. When I come to that point, I'm coming right up at one side of that point. Just like if I were doing this needle turn, I've got to get both sides secured. So I'm gonna bring that up. It's a little bit there's a lot of fabric in there. I'm gonna turn my work I'm going to go back down, and I'm probably going to have to go down and then back up, not like I usually do, 
but because I want to make sure I come up in the exact right spot. And I'm going to come back up on the other side of this point, right there. You can see where I'm coming. It's just, just right on the very other side of that tip. And I'm going to start working my way back down, making little tiny stitches around this point so that I'm sure to secure it. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep going back down the other side. And I'm going to do this around the whole piece. And like I stated before, you're going to do this same stitch around every one of the flowers and also on both sides of your bias strips that you've laid out for your little curly cues on there. And that's all there is to this. It's a very easy stitch. And if you look at the back, it's very tiny stitches. You don't want very big stitches. That's what is going, excuse me, going to keep everything where you want it when you pull these papers out. Now, if you use the applique papers and you don't have to worry about pulling the papers out, this will be your final step. If you're using freezer paper, then next week I'm going to show you how I take my papers out with um, when I use freezer paper. And one reason that I use the double layer of um, freezer paper to do this with instead of a single layer is because it makes it less likely as I'm doing this part for me to puncture it so that I don't have as much trouble with pulling my stitches out when I do this last part. But that's how you applique. That's the applique stitch and how you applique it down. Next week we'll pull the papers out. Thank you for joining me. My name is Starla Henderson with Frenner House Quilts.